Okay. They've created a pee. pathological public. This is what the media and the Democrats have done. And Dr. Fauci and our public health establishment. They've created a pathological fear of a virus that should not be feared at this point by pretty much anybody other than people who are uniquely compromised, immunocompromised, or very, very elderly. There is, there is no reason to spend enormous quantities of brain power worrying about COVID these days. Now that the vaccines are available, we are it's over, okay? If the vaccines are available and you choose to get a vaccine, you shouldn't be worried. If you choose not to get a vaccine, you're probably not getting vaccinated because you're not particularly worried. Okay, so we're done. But for a certain segments of the population, the, the paranoia has set in and the paranoia will not leave. And so you will get more mandates. You'll get more attempts to cram down, more attempts to control, even though you now have the government openly admitting you're not gonna be able to eradicate this virus. So then what's the purpose? Really, what's the purpose of what you're doing at this point? Okay, the, the, the pathology is visible nearly everywhere. So Mark Cuban, he says that he's going to force his employees to be vaccinated. So he, here he was ranting about all of this. If you work for me, I require my, my employees to be vaccinated um, unless there's a, a doctor's reason where they can't be. You know, like you, I don't want my kids to be at risk. So, you know, the consequences of you not being vaccinated is I'm not going to shut the fuck up. I'm going to be in your mother near driving you mother crazy. What a hero. What a hero. OK, there's only one problem. Your kids are not at risk, Mark. Your kids aren't at risk. The total number of children in the United States who have died over the course of this pandemic with COVID-19, not just from with, is under six. By the way, okay, let's, uh, I, I know I repeat myself a lot whenever we fucking talk about COVID and shit, but like, I do find this additionally hilarious, I guess, uh, because, you know, number one cause of death for the past two months for people between the ages of 34 and 55, okay? Ben Shapiro talking about how the media is uh, greatly exaggerating and, and making COVID seem like a thing to be feared is a absolutely preposterous proposition because it should be something that people should fear. And especially because the overwhelming majority, I mean, not even overwhelming majority, every single person nearly, damn near every single fucking person is literally a uh, a, a, an unvox unvaccinated person i thoroughly enjoyed that interview it was one of the better segments of your stream i actually pay attention to the reason you're cultivating an audience that reacts negatively to more serious conversations is because you spend your hours looking at lsf reddit and bullshit you reap what you sow thank you big brain idiot um you have to also recognize that i'm an entertainer and that's uh the way that i reach a broader audience and therefore that's precisely how i get twenty five thousand people to at the very least pay attention to an interview with spencer ackerman Whereas, uh, I don't know, if I routinely did exclusively serious subject matter coverage, then I would have 300 people listening to that interview. So shut the fuck up. Let me do my goddamn thing, okay? You don't know better than me on how I do my fucking thing. That's why you're there and I'm here. And you're watching me. You reap what you sow. Yeah. 600 during that same time total number of kids who have died from pneumonia closer to a thousand according to dr marty mccary from johns hopkins university total number of kids total in the united states who have died from covid19 without a significant your pc video might be out today it's already on float plane what's float plane significant pre-existing condition is somewhere, he said this on the show last week, is somewhere between 10 and 20. 10 and 20. And Mark Cuban is saying that he's going to yell at you and force you to get vaccinated and be in your MFing year because his kids are at risk. The only way you can believe this is if you've been propagandized to. Democrats have put that propaganda out there for too long, and now people are ensconced in it. And when they're called on it, they have no response to it. So <coughs> Joe Rogan, who is, I mean, listen, I'm full disclosure. I'm very friendly with Joe. I think Joe's great. So Joe had on Sanjay Gupta from CNN, right, their medical expert over at CNN. And it just went so poorly for Gupta because if you are the public health expert over the last year, you look like a fool. You've done a terrible job, generally speaking. 
So Gupta was asked by Rogan about children vaccine. And Rogan says something very simple. And what you're about to hear is a very simple logical point from Rogan that Gupta completely misses. Okay, Rogan says to him, so here's the deal, Sanjay, you're vaccinated, right? And Gupta's like, yeah. He's like, and Oh, the brilliant point that he's making, which is that you're vaccinated. So uh, like, what if you feel like you're actually more safe because you're vaccinated? And then because of that, you're just like putting yourself at risk. Uh, brilliant, dude. That's not a brilliant point, you fucking dingus. Because you're addressing a point that does not exist. You're addressing a point where it's like, the people who are unvaccinated are fucking dying. And Ben Shapiro knows this, and he has to admit this, but he refuses to because, you know, he it's not great for his audience. Right? The people who are unvaccinated aren't literally fucking at... Uh, living in fear and staying at home. They're just unvaccinated and doing the exact same shit that they're doing. A recent study showed that the vaccine would have prevented 90,000 deaths in a four-month period. Yeah, study made by Communism University. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, sorry. That's right. Bias studies. And you don't feel afraid, right? And Gupta's like, yeah. He's like, you're 51, right? Gupta's like, yeah. He's like, well, um, your chances of dying from COVID are still higher than that of a child. So why are we supposed to be worried about kids? Should they be worried? Should they walk? You're not worried. Should kids who are at a lower risk than you, should their parents be worried? Here is a, here's Rogan just taking. Oh, it's on his, uh, it's on his like platform float plane that, uh, that sh you get early access to his videos on. And his video is, I shouldn't have built this computer. Oh my God. I love that. Okay. He can go up to the woodshed. Your well, attitude that you're not worried about catching it because you've been vaccinated and you're a healthy guy. I'm, that is the exact same feeling that people have about vaccinating their children. If they have healthy children and they know that statistically speaking, there's so few children that have died from COVID. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, th th there are. It's like, I think, 500 or so children. Out of have died millions from, and millions and millions of kids. That probably have been exposed. Yeah. And, and, but, you know, it's it, again, part of it is is not defining this in terms of life and death. Oh, OK. Well, OK. OK. But by the way, Rogan didn't stop there. He also went after Gupta because he's on CNN. And he was like, um, so I took ivermectin and people kept saying on CNN that it was horse dewormer. And uh, you guys are liars. Here is here's Rogan just shellacking Gupta over it. Horse dewormer is not a flattering thing. I get it's that. It's a lie. It's a lie on a news network. It, and it's it, a lie that's a willing that's that's a lie that they're conscious of. This is not a mistake. Yeah, they're unfavorably framing it as veterinary medicine. Don't you think that a lie like that is dangerous on a news network when you know that they know they're lying? The, the thing is, we're, we're we're like going so fast. Like I feel like I'm missing. I'm missing. Do you think I want that that's to... a problem that your news network was not... lies? Well, I don't. I love that Joe Rogan is like hyper focusing on the dude. Your news network is lying when like. The entire criticism directed at Joe Rogan right now is that at this point, like, he's fucking lying about COVID. You know what I mean? Like, he knows better. He has to know better. So many motherfuckers have talked about it. <laughs> to him, at him, about him. Like, he's had friends who are doctors, like Ronna Patrick, come on. And he just refuses to fucking listen. He refuses to listen and excuse exclusively exclusively fucking listens to people who agree with him already i don't th dude I mean, what did they say they lied what did and they said say? i was taking horse dewormer yeah it turns out that our media are really really bad at their jobs okay but here's the problem a lot of people trust that media a lot of people have been listening to that media i don't see how biden pulls out of the economic tailspin i don't I think that he has created a pathological paranoia in a significant percentage of the population. I think there are people who are going to be wearing masks four years from now, five years from now, maybe forever, because they've been told that the masks are protective. It's become a security blanket. I think the message of the last year truly is that for a new normal to set in does not take very long at all, like at all. I mean, you do wonder over the course of human history, there have been some pretty massive changes in how people live. And you wonder, how did people just accept that? How did people just go along with it? And suddenly they were living a completely different life. You got reverence in common etiquette's latest Greetings. video? Wait, why? Where? Tell me where and we'll watch and they it. They were like five years ago. 
And the answer is that the human brain is quite adaptable. People adapt to new circumstances very quickly. That is the great superpower of humanity. We can adapt to nearly every... Ben and I 100% agree on this, by the way. Like, I do agree that, uh, on this issue. This is, like, something that I wholeheartedly agree with. Humans are incredibly adaptable. From the chatter Hassan banned before. Joe Rogan is an averagely intelligent American. Imagine how fucking stupid the below average are. Do they have to remember how to breathe? Yeah, well, he got banned, so what does also that say about him? That we can reorient our brains to really bad ideas incredibly quickly and start living in line with those ideas to our own detriment. And it's very hard to shake us from that. After we get to that, unless there is good leadership, this is where leadership comes in, in statesmanship, unless you have people who are out there actively battling these pathologies, these mental pathologies that people now have about this, this is going to remain for a long time. And Joe Biden has, he helped create the pathology. He's got a problem. The only way the economy comes back is if Joe Biden says to people, you are now safe, go live your life. He won't do it. And Bro, but like people literally aren't. I, I don't know. Like, I mean, I don't know how you can be like even lightly anti-mask or not anti-mask, sorry, anti-vax or like allow anti-vaxxer rhetoric to continue and defend while simultaneously being like, oh yeah, we should go back and live in our, in our lives. It's like, dude, that's what we want, dumbass. Like that's what everybody wants. And I know Ben is vaccinated. He routinely says like the vaccines work, but then he follows that up with like, if you don't want to take it, you shouldn't. Well, okay, but we can't go back to regular lives. If motherfuckers are like, I'm not taking the vaccine. If everybody was, if literally every single person was vaccinated, COVID would no longer be a problem. Okay. COVID would, would no longer be a problem. It would no longer be as fucking deadly. Okay. Wrong. That is not wrong at all. That is absolutely correct. You're ignorant if you think it wouldn't be. Like, there could be additional strains that come out. But we should have... We literally should have everyone vaccinated regardless. So that, like, if there's a new strain, then we can combat it. But it is less likelihood of mutations, at least in America, okay? Less likely of mutations when there's less uh, unvaccinated people. <laughs> By the way, Ben's not, this is not an own. He's not an anti-vaxxer. Spent the day watching my fully vaccinated 13-month-old cough until blue with pertussis because others didn't get vaccinated. Thanks, Dalt. This is not an own. This is not an own chat. He isn't an anti-vaxxer. I mean, I guess it's still an own because like he's making it seem like he shouldn't fucking, not everyone should get vaccinated. So I guess it is technically still an own. Absolutely horrendous. My guy will not be gone. No, you fucking idiot. I'm not saying COVID will be eradicated if everyone is vaccinated, but you know what will happen? It will no longer be as deadly. What the fuck do you not understand? 99% of motherfuckers that are dying in the hospital right now are unvaccinated, dude. The only way the economy comes back is if Joe Biden says to people, you need to go back to work and get a job. And meanwhile, he's trying to pay them to stay home. It's not 99% nice hyperbole. No, it depending on what area you're looking at, it's like, it ranges from 90% to 99%. Okay? That is not hyperbole. I don't need a medical degree, okay, to recognize that the overwhelming majority, if not every single motherfucker dying of COVID is unvaccinated. That is so fucking psychotic. You showed us in Poland, it's 98.2%. Yeah. And it's not just me. It's like Fox News, dude. Fox News. Fox News is covering it. And these motherfuckers are like, eh, shut the fuck up. I don't care.
And it's wild. It's like, dude, oh my God. Like, how, how have you avoided that fundamental truth? You actually said it would be gone. Come on, bro. No, what I mean is like the fear will be gone. Okay. COVID, even if it's not completely eradicated, will no longer ravage red states and destroy uh, rural hospital systems in the way that it currently is because motherfuckers will be immunized against it. It will literally become less severe than the fucking seasonal flu. Y'all are crushing our ICU ER staffs. They're going 20 months on overwhelming shifts. Yeah, like... Stop being a fucking pedantic dipshit, dude. Like, you know what I mean. I, I don't think that it'll be gone completely, but it will no longer be an issue. I want to return to fucking normal, dude. None of this is going to be conducive to a healthy economy or to a healthy presidency for Joe Biden. I think that he's locked himself in a box here and he is like a mime now. He's just, he's just pushing at the invisible glass, trying to find a way out. And meanwhile, speaking of Joe Biden and uh, being trapped in a box with somebody who's not great, so Joe Biden apparently is now going to become embroiled in the Hunter Biden email scandal. Remember that time that that was not a story, the Hunter Biden email scandal? What the fuck is he talking about, dude? Okay, I'm done. I can't watch the rest of this. This is so fucking stupid. Getting buff with Yelp's worst rated trainer. Okay, we're going to move on to that. And what okay, but before we do that, Joe Rogan apparently is reflecting on the Weinstein Sam Harris drama. Sam Harris is like making a... Uh, return back to making a return back to like you know being a liberal and he's being a liberal on the covid stuff you know he's he's woke again i mean he's still probably an islamophobic piece of shit but he's like actively trying to debate brett weinstein on uh the issue of covid because weinstein is like you know dr horse paste over here uh for those of you who don't know he's just like a, a fucking regular advocate of ivermectin press who i love dearly i think he's a brilliant person and then brett weinstein who's a, a i love him dearly i think he's a brilliant person they disagree vehemently but they don't talk that's and too bad weinstein wants to talk and sam doesn't want to have him on because sam essentially thinks he's almost like a flat earther now and uh i was trying to figure out how to work this out and i'm like okay let me just figure out what the approach is and i don't think i could even get them together in a room like if sam doesn't want to have brett on his podcast and so i'm like okay could i have the two of them on mine like that's surely too bad what does sam be common say ground. why does sam doesn't want i mean that's it's strange to me that he wouldn't want to i don't know I'm i mean because there's sure. like look i, I, I mean, don't want to put words in his mouth yeah i don't but his, i mean there's his position is that yeah. brett is uh W wildly incorrect about the efficacy of the vaccines, the dangers of the vaccines, and um, the effectiveness of them. And also that he's incorrect about uh, how vaccines will select for more aggressive variants when the vaccines allow transmission, right? So the, being a leaky vaccine, this is the controversy. as one of the controversies that I got involved with too because I tweeted a paper from 2015 that was specifically about how leaky vaccines, meaning vaccines that also allow transmission, like vaccines that don't necessarily 100% protect you from transmission, can select for more aggressive variants. Because so if there's one protein like in this vaccine that protects you from COVID, but then there are other variants that are not protected in that same way, having a mass population vaccinated will select for these variants. And Sam's position was that these, first of all, this variant came from India what? where there's way less wait, people. Wait, 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 wait. So Brett Weinstein's so, so, position is just completely false. And Sam's position is just like in line with the the scientific community. Got it. Necessarily 100% protect you from transmission can select for more aggressive variants. Because so if there's one 
protein like in this vaccine that protects you from COVID, but then there are other variants that are not protected. In that yeah, those variants literally mutated in unvaccinated people. This is literally just completely incorrect. Those okay, the original COVID variant that was all around had really good immunization uh, and really good response from the vaccine, okay? Like the likelihood that you were going to get COVID, even if you got that, even if you, uh, the likelihood that you were going to get COVID when you were vaccinated with the original variant was relatively low. You could still get it. There could still be breakthrough cases, but it was relatively low. And then amongst the unvaccinated population in India, okay, where there was a gigantic unvaccinated population in India, a new variant mutated called the Delta variant. That was stronger. That didn't happen because of vaccines, dude. And no, India is not the USA in the East. The reason why there was a, a high population of unvaccinated people in India was because India is a fucking poor country and our billionaires refused to fucking release the IP to developing nations so they could produce their own fucking vaccines. So the real big pharma conspiracy here is not necessarily that big pharma's trying to make money, blah, 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 blah. That's why they're fucking trying to give you microchips and make you a homosexual uh, person by getting you vaccinated. The real big pharma conspiracy is that these dipshits in positions of power refuse to fucking release IP, okay, and care more about their bottom line and their fucking corporate profits than they do about stopping the fucking spread of this disease as quickly as possible. Which is, of course, hilarious because India was literally responsible for producing the fucking vaccines for the rest of the developing world because we outsourced the manufacturing there too. So people like Bill Gates who regularly said, well, I didn't want to release the IP because like, we don't know if they have the good, uh, you know, we, we don't know if they have facilities to be able to create the vaccine is fucking bullshit. that same way having a mass population vaccinated will select for these variants and sam's position was that these first of all this variant came from india where there's way less people that are vaccinated but i don't think brett's position is that it's creating these variants but it's that having people vaccinated for that variant selects for more aggressive variants i'm too dumb to understand who's right right and i i, I hear this conversation going back and forth dude dude he's first of all then why take a fucking strong stance on one side against the other, like, regularly? Dude, it, it goes to show that, like, he is literally a fucking ape. Okay? He just is a straight-up fucking ape. Okay? It's obvious. He's such a fucking dumb ape that he, like, doesn't do his own research and only relies on people who he considers to be, like, brilliant. If you were early on in, like, influencing Joe Rogan, then that's it. Like, he will trust you. That's why he's like, oh, I just don't know which side is correct and which side is incorrect. The only reason why he's saying that is because, like, a person he trusts, Sam fucking Harris, has this point of view, so he's just like, yeah, I just, like, I don't know. You literally said you might go on the podcast. That doesn't mean anything. Of course I would go on his fucking podcast. He has a gigantic fucking platform. I will never be invited on his podcast because I fucking, you know, talk a lot of shit. Punching up for attention? Yes, dude. That's what I'm doing. If I wanted to go on Joe Rogan's podcast, I would suck his cock non-fucking stop. Okay? You dumb bitch. You think I, as literally the fucking most popular socialist broadcaster in the United States of America right now, wouldn't be able to get on the Joe Rogan experience, If I, especially when I'm literally friends with people who have been on the Joe Rogan experience already, just by being like, yeah, he's just great. He's really smart. Come on, Kyle. Can you, like, ask him to put me on? Come on, David. Can you ask him to put me on? It's not that fucking crazy of a, a, a thing that could happen. The only reason that it is prevented... The only reason why it can't happen is because, you know, I am honest about my perspective. Or 
forth. And I'm like, are there going to be mutations no matter what? And apparently everybody says there is. Like if you have like a, a bunch of people infected by a disease, even if there's no vaccine, you're going to have variants. You're going to have mutations. Things, viruses change and adapt and, and you know. So it's, it's fucking complicated shit. But it's Brett's wheelhouse. I mean, he is an evolutionary biologist. This is what he, you know, he studies. So it's when he discusses it, he's not discussing it from a position where he's guessing. And then, you know, I think the two of them probably could come to some understanding if they got together in a room and talked it through. But this is a part of the hysteria of the times yeah. that people don't want to be associated with people that they think have questionable ideas or that are promoting questionable ideas. And there's a, there's a panic that's attached to this pandemic that is uh, testing people's resolve and their intellectual fortitude in a way that I don't think I've ever seen anything like it in my life. What? Times yeah. that people don't want to be associated with people that they think have questionable ideas or that are promoting questionable ideas. And it, there's, a, there's a panic that's attached to... <laughs> You're so boring. You're looking at MSNBC host. For Teen Vogue, Z, 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 tax the rich, $2 million house, though. Seethe harder. This pandemic that is uh, testing people's resolve and their intellectual fortitude in a way that I don't think I've ever seen anything like it in my life. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because you say, like, he's like, he considers it a flat earth theory. Well, why would you, why would you not want to debate somebody that has a flat earth theory? It well, should be pretty easy for you. Maybe it's, win. it's not. It's not. You're a dumbass. Whoever this fucking person is, he's a dumbass. It's not easy to debate people who uh, uh, are, are like, who have learned a completely false set of data and have created, like, a fucking, uh, a complete different universe they live in because you have to enter that universe, know all that information, be as knowledgeable as they are about the fucking flat earth information, and also be able to recognize what the talking points are to be able to effectively counter them and dismantle them. You're like debating an insane person is not an easy thing. Okay. I hate to be, I hate to use this cliche, but it's like, it's like this. The, the, the cliche is what? Like you can't, you can't argue with stupid because they'll drag you down to their level and they have a lot more experience there. It's just the truth. You can't, like, having a, having a debate about people like flat earthers and whatnot requires you to know so much about fucking flat earth. Because they're just going to keep fucking pulling, they're going to keep pulling, like, weird ass uh, shit out of their ass. That you might not know how to fucking address. You're like, what the fuck? Now, having said that, though, Sam Harris should learn all the fucking anti-vaxxer talking points because, like, come on, it's easy. Like, you know, it's, a, it's way more damaging than Flat Earth. Uh, it's, it's way more important than Flat Earth. Uh, and, and, you know, everyone is aware of what the fucking talking points are, so just, like, figure it out. So it's argument. not, I mean, he's a, a neuroscientist. Maybe it's not his wheel. Is that why you don't debate? Because you think that you're above everyone, you asshole? I, too, love getting mad at an imaginary person that I made up in my mind. Like, you literally, in that fucking sequence, got upset at what you perceive I do or don't do. I still debate. But I ultimately think it's unproductive unless you know what the fuck you're doing. I also admit that I'm not a great debater myself, but I do think that debates overall are rather unproductive uh, and uh, that they are for entertainment and for people to learn more talking points about their side and learn the opposing side's talking points. It's not about like fucking figuring out the truths and lol got him. Okay, well, I just got you. Oh, there the you go. Yeah. You know, maybe he thinks that someone else should do it. I don't know. Yeah. You know, but it's just, to me, it's just, it's crazy.
Why does it seem like for every uh, person that gets banned, there's two more bozos that take their place? Wait, I was mentioned in this? When was I mentioned? Wait, is that door? Oh.